Good morning. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, we're talking about Corona Watch. We're going to call this show about Corona Watch, uh, but it's actually a very interesting um, angle on that. And to help us analyze uh, what we got today is Catherine Knorr. Uh, she is the host of Much More on Medicine, which plays on Wednesday. Am I right, Catherine? Correct. We, we have a yeah. three o'clock show tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, why don't you tell everybody what you're doing tomorrow? You got a, you got a guest? Oh, we do. Um, it's another attorney, uh, Natalie Pettit, and we are going to be talking about legal issues and COVID-19. We know many of you may have some legal questions and we're gonna dive into the legal issues that arise out of the virus. Okay, great, great. Um, you know, and you, and you, you touch an interesting point is that we, we're doing a lot of uh, COVID-19 shows. In fact, since it began, and it began for us in January, uh, we've done something close to 80 of them. And you can find them uh, on, our, um, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash think tech away it's the uh, playlist called corona watch and uh, all our corona watch shows uh, corona related shows are there so today we're going to talk about uh, something that think tech thought it ought to need to do um, namely have a survey and uh, survey our our followers and listeners and viewers um, to see what they thought about coverage and what they wanted to know about uh, so we created a survey we publicized it on our daily email advisory uh, gave everybody a link. There's a link uh, on our um, uh, on our website also. Uh, the survey ends on the 15th, which is what next uh, next Wednesday. Um, so everybody should come around and 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 uh, and uh, fill out the survey so we can get a handle on what you're interested in knowing about and uh, and sort of shape our coverage around that going forward. But we do have nearly 50 responses so far. Um, a lot of them came in today. Uh, today is only the what the third day the survey is open for response. Um, so Catherine and I thought we'd get together and uh, examine the results we have so far, which is not complete, but which is enough to have a good discussion about, uh, and see what they tell us at least so far. So Catherine, you know, you you took the survey. You got some general Im impressions you want to talk about? Uh, sure. When I took the survey, I was thinking about my feelings about what was going on and that I wasn't a really early adopter in this. And the reason why is because I'm kind of used to news media making a big deal out of like an event, like a hurricane is coming. Then I go immediately to the store and buy a lot of items. And for some reason, this event, I heard the kind of um, coverage and I didn't get as excited about it. Um, I started hearing it when I was in Lima, Peru on BBC World News. And maybe the reason why I wasn't, I didn't buy in as early as a lot of people was because I was hearing about China and it wasn't really in the US yet. Yeah, isn't that true? Uh, that includes the president. He wasn't buying into it either. Um, I personally became aware in early January when there was a uh, we had a, um, we filmed uh, something called the Pacific Telecommunications Conference on January 10th. And uh, lo and behold, there was an email from the manager of the conference to the attendees. And there was something in the order of 7,200 attendees saying that somebody had flown from Wuhan, Cathay Airlines to Narita, and from Narita to Honolulu and had been at, at the conference. And so, whoa, wow. Well, this, now it's right in our lap, and there were all these people at the conference that could have caught it. Um, but I called her up and found that uh, no, that was that was actually not exactly the case because this person who was supposed to come to Honolulu and come to the conference, in fact, got off the plane in Narita. Um, but it, it it awakened me, uh, it awakened mm -hmm. Think Tech, and uh, to the sub. We started doing shows then, and we've done a lot of shows, and we've drilled down with experts on many, many, and you know, and, and you see a lot of this now today on CNN and MSNBC and the like, um, but we, we've been covering it for as long or longer, and we've been covering it in, in great detail on some shows. We have some very notable um, global experts that come on in every aspect of coronavirus. But let's look at the survey. So, um, you know, will, will the, uh, the maestro please bring up the survey and we'll go down question by question. All right, first question. 
what aspects of the coronavirus interest you most? Okay, and uh, you know the, you can't read the, all of the uh, the words in the question, but this is a kind of um, you know example of what Survey Monkey can do when people fill out the answers. So we can go down uh, one one screen and see the exact questions and see what the answers were like. So how the disease progresses? Hmm, 38 percent. How to avoid catching it? Fifty three percent. Everybody's interested in that. This is really right now. How will it affect my job? Not so much, 13%. How will it affect my finances? 35% is pretty good. How will it affect my quality of life? 42%. And that's true. That's a big question. How will it affect the state? I, interesting, that's a statewide kind of consciousness at 67%. How will it affect the country? Not so many people care. How will it affect the world? 48, almost 49%. So what does this tell us, Catherine? Um, well, you know, what does it tell us about the people answering? And what does it tell us about what we should focus on? Well, one thing that kind of actually bothers me a little bit about the responses is um, that um, it only 13% or so, I can't remember the percentage of how many it would affect their, were concerned about their jobs. That led me to believe that there weren't very many um, people in the service industry, such as uh, wait staff at, at uh, restaurants or uh, hotel employees um, or airline employees that took the survey. And that concerns me because I would think that, um, that really surprised me because I would think that many people would feel that it would affect their job. And that also leads me to believe that quite a bit of retired people or exempt employees um, may have filled out the survey. Yeah, well, that's true. And I, and I wanted to take a moment and tell you, uh, you know, who is getting our notice about this survey. Uh, we have it on our website, thinktechwhite.com, uh, which has, uh, you know, all our current and, and old movies, uh, you know, going way back when we have 9,000 movies. Um, and so it's on the top of the website. So everybody in our mailing list uh, is going to, everybody in our viewer list, which quite as many tens of thousands is going to see that every time they, they watch a movie on our website, uh, live or, uh, you know, uh, or, or from our archives. Um, so I'm not sure who that is, uh, but I think it's a lot of people and it's probably most people in Hawaii, although we do have a following on the mainland and elsewhere. Uh, the other place where they would catch it is in our daily email advisory, which goes out to our mailing list every day, which is uh, something in the order of uh, seven to 8,000 people, and they get it every day. And we've had an article on there since last week um, providing people the link so they can click on it. So those are the two primary sources. Uh, and of course, we told our you know immediate friends and followers about it. Um, so it doesn't reach everybody. It may not reach everybody, for example, in the tourism industry, and maybe that's why you have that 13% number. It's a, it's a good point you make, Catherine. Let's go on to the next question. This is question two. What kind of people would you like to hear from? Select one or more. This is easier to read at the graph. Doctors and medical people, um, that's pretty robust. Scientists and epidemiologists, people wanna hear from the scientists. Political and government, that's the lowest one on the chart. I guess it tells us people, you know, either don't believe or don't want to hear from political and government officials. E economists, I guess some people, many people are concerned about, uh, you know, economics and the business, uh, business community and recession, depression, what have you. Neighborhood and communities, um, not so much. Actually, it looks like that's the same or slightly less than political and government. I, I don't think people necessarily see this as a neighborhood issue. And leaders in other states, like governors in other states, they want to hear, you know, from those leaders. Now, let's look at the percentages. Doctors and medical professionals, 63%. Scientists is the top of this survey, 79 plus. Politics and government leaders is um, pretty close to the bottom. Um, nobody wants to hear from them. Economists and business leaders, uh, 56%, almost 57%. People want to hear about what's going to happen in the economy. Um, neighborhood and community leaders, that's, that's the same as uh, 
political and government leaders. I guess people don't really want to know what their neighbors feel about it. They, they want to connect up with the national events uh, or the statewide events. And leaders in other states, like governors, 29%. Uh, interesting, people are not that interested in uh, other states. Um, okay, so what are your reactions to that, Catherine? I'm sure you have some. I do. Um, I actually was just listening to the uh, governor of California on a broadcast before we started this. And I hear Trump, I hear all of these different leaders. I hear Ige, I hear Caldwell, I hear so many government leaders. I hear enough from them. I don't hear from scientists and epidemiologists. I don't hear from medical doctors. And I know, Jay, that you have those people on your shows so we can hear it on Think Tech Hawaii, but on other broadcast networks, we're not hearing from them as much as we're hearing from the government. So I think people have had enough of that. And now they want to hear from those people, the kind of people that you're bringing on to your show, Jay. I think it's a lot of confusion out there. If you if you watch the uh, Trump, uh, um, you know, uh, press conferences, gee, I, it really doesn't sound like a press conference, does it, where he beats up on the press. I guess that for him is a press conference. Um, you get confused, you know, what's the real deal here? Um, and I think people are confused and they want to resolve that confusion by talking or hearing from uh, experts. We started experts pretty early. Uh, we had Sarah Park, the state epidemiologist, she's an MD on the show. We had a, a researcher from Japsom on the show. We have um, uh, Yu Ping uh, Deng, as I remember, um, who is uh, coming on this week. He's from uh, Japsom and he's he's working on uh, pharmacology that might actually have an effect on the immune system that was in uh, Civil Beat and the newspaper last week. So we're going to drill down with him. Um, and we have, this is the big one, really, really big. I mean, there have been a lot of doctors, uh, Brad Wilcox last week, um, but the really big one is um, a fellow named Dwayne Gubler. Gubler is infectious diseases. Gubler was with, with CDC, he's uh, Johns Hopkins. He was with CDC for years. He was with the World Health Organization for years. Um, he was in Japsom. I think he's still associated with Japsom. Um, and uh, he had a very, a very uh, robust uh, career um, at, uh, in Singapore at the, uh, um, the Duke uh, NUS Medical School there where he developed a, uh, a very substantial infectious disease department doing research. And anyway, we, we have him coming on later this week. Uh, that is really a very important show because he, this is a, a world famous uh, uh, infectious disease researcher uh, who has connection with Hawaii um, and who can tell us a lot about what is going on with coronavirus. I have questions up one arm and down the other to ask him about. Um, anyway, uh, yes, we have, we, have, um, we have medical professionals coming on. But let's, let's look... Uh, further at uh, question three um, and try to get through that one. This is, how do you feel about the future? This is like a psychological test. Extremely frightened, not that many, it's pretty small actually. Somewhat frightened, um, okay. Um, that's more than 60%, more than 50% rather. Uh, not at all frightened, we don't have too many in that category. Generally optimistic. That is very interesting. And I'd like you to comment about that, Catherine. And I don't know enough. I find that interesting. And uh, then I, the last one is I don't think coronavirus is of any concern. And this, nobody said anything on that one. Let's look at the, uh, the text on it. Yeah, I don't think coronavirus is a real concern. Zero. Extremely frightened. Not that many people. Somewhat frightened. I'm not sure what that means, but 54, 55 percent. Not at all frightened, 2%. Generally optimistic, 34%. That's interesting. I don't know who is, is optimistic. And I don't know enough, 4.5. Uh, so what do you think about this? This is a little, I mean, you wonder if people are reading the same material that I am and that you are. <laughs> if I, you know, I did answer this and I said I was very frightened, but that's just me. What do you think? Um, this bodes well better for the stock market in having some people that are somewhat optimistic because we do want people to be optimistic enough that they're going to spend money and keep the economy going. If everyone was 
extremely frightened that would be worse for the economy. Um, I understand the somewhat frightened because I think most people, clearly we haven't been through something like this before. And um, I'm not sure if those are the people that are watching those movies um, like Contagion and getting fearful from that. But I think that we're kind of in this uncertain zone. And when people feel uncertain about the future, they do become somewhat frightened. And so I think that I'm actually happy with those results. I think that it's reasonable to have people somewhat frightened. We want them to stay home. But on the other hand, we want people somewhat optimistic so that they'll pay, sp spend money so that we can keep our economy going. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's good that we made this uh, anonymous. You know, we don't know who answered what. Um, I think that's valuable because you want people to be candid. And I, whatever, what, however you feel about the substantive answers here, is, especially this one, the psychology and uh, you know, emotional reaction. Um, it's, I think it's candid. I think people really feel this way. Okay, let's go on to the next question. All right, how well has county government, we went through county and state and federal, how well has county government in Hawaii done in the crisis? And you gotta select one. So they've done very well, they've done well, uh, but uh, they've been, uh, but they haven't been candid. That's the second one. Uh, they've been candid, but they haven't done well is the third one. Uh, they've been neither candid nor have they done well. Too early to say. That's the you know that's the largest category. Um, that's an interesting answer. It means I I, I I don't know what it means. <laughs> you can tell me, and I don't know enough to say. That's kind of related to it's too early to say. Let's look at the uh, text now. So thirteen, almost fourteen percent. They've done very well in all respects. All the counties. Mm, interesting. <clears throat> and a lot of this is public relations. How well have they you know reached the public? Uh, they've done well, but they haven't been candid. Only 2%. That's interesting on the counties. Uh, the third one is uh, they've been candid, but they haven't done very well. Um, that's interesting because 20% um, you know, people don't think they've done very well at the county level. And they've been neither candid nor have they done well. Hmm, 16%. Hmm. So you take the 15, uh, the 16% plus the 20%, you get a lot of people who don't feel that the counties have done very well. Uh, too early to say, 36%. I'd like your opinion on that, Catherine. And I don't know enough to say, 11%. They don't, how can you not know what's going on? But that's rhetorical. So, Catherine, what do you think of these okay. answers? Eh? Let's add up the bottom two. The bottom two is too early to say and doesn't have enough information to know. Um, that's about 47%. That's roughly half. And that makes sense to me because I think a lot of people either are purposely not listening to everything that's coming out, otherwise it's too overwhelming. And people have imperfect information. I admit that I have imperfect information. I do listen to probably, unfortunately, two plus hours of um, content about this or, or consume that much a day. Um, I would prefer to consume less, but I still feel like I have imperfect information about decision making and I think it's a kind of a reasonable response to kind of be in that category that let's see whether they were right and whether they made the proper decisions. On the other hand, perhaps the ones that have very, that are more opinionated on it, maybe they're consuming more information or they have more, they're just more opinionated people. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah right. Or, or they're just confused. Uh, that's why, you know, they can't come to conclusions because mm -hmm. they're, they're sort of tossed between the... Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, how well has Hawaii state government done in the crisis? Um, not, a lot of, not a lot of people think they've done very well. Uh, uh, some people think they've done well, but they haven't been candid. Uh, some people think they've been candid... Um, but they haven't done, we gotta look at the text here. And the blue one, the biggest one, if they haven't been candid or done well, and of course we have those two last ones that you were talking about, too early to say, I don't know enough to say. Uh, so let's look at the text. Yeah, they've done very well in all respects, 7%. Done well, but haven't been candid. Mm, mm, same thing, 7%. They've been candid, but they haven't done well. Mm, appreciate that, 20%. 
They've neither been candid nor have they done well, 31%. That's the biggest number here. And uh, the rest is uh, too early to say, and I don't know enough. Those are the ones who either don't know or are confused. So I guess your, re your reaction is going to be pretty much the same. And people do not uh, have a high level of confidence here. Okay. My reaction is a little different. Okay. If you look at the two that have the answer, they haven't done well in it, that adds up to more than 50%. Okay. Um, I think we are in an environment where we have this. Uh, expensive rail, and we have this um, government corruption trial uh, with the Kealohas that has just been big news. We have a lot of things locally that have been disappointing with our government. And I think people are not looking at the coronavirus um, situation in a vacuum. I think that they're looking at their feelings generally about how how state government is handling things so i think that this reflects that as well uh, i think that's a very good point catherine thank you for that let's go on to the next uh, the next slide next question ah federal government wow what a disparity done very well they've done well but they haven't been candid they've been candid but they haven't done well They've been neither candid nor have they done well. That's the one that goes to, oh my God, almost 70%. And of course, too early to say, or I don't know anything. Um, let's go to the, um, yeah, so yeah. I guess the one, the one that's remarkable, the one we have to talk about and analyze a little bit is they haven't been candid or done well. Uh, it's a mess at the federal level. And I suppose, um, you know, the, the press has, uh, has given us a pretty good insight into uh, when Trump is telling the truth and when he's not, when he's uh, dissociative and, and when he's cogent. And so this is a re reflection of those press conferences and all of the really horrible things that have happened with regard to testing and the back and fill on masks. And, and of course, uh, you know, uh, they have the fact that the n national effort has been so bad, including uh, laying it off on the states and criticizing the states when it is in fact the federal government's obligation, clear obligation to do something in a crisis. So what's your reaction with that big number, the 66, 67 percent, Catherine? I would expect it. In Hawaii, we have a, um, we're mostly a Democratic state. We have very few Republicans in our state or in our, legisla uh, our legislature. And so therefore, we're going to have a huge number that is disappointed with our federal government. If we were in uh, a, a red, what is it, a blue state or a red state, blue, blue state. <laughs> anyway, if we were in a red state, I think we would find that um, it would be different. We would have um, probably the opposite. So I think this is a um, definitely reflects our feelings um, as Hawaii residents that are mostly Democrat. Yeah. But also, I, I took, um, I took, clearly, go ahead. Um, clearly, it also reflects um, the media coverage and the perception by the people that is reasonable. Sure. I took the survey, and I'll tell you, there's no question, partisan or not, there's no question uh, objectively to me that. Uh, the federal government has not done well. It has not been candid. You took the survey. How did you answer this question? I, you know, actually, I don't recall. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think I was in the 66%, but I can't remember exactly where I landed. But I, I completely understand why people would feel that way because the press conferences have, uh, it's a little inconsistent information. It's pretty difficult. And like you commented early, when I mentioned that I was a later adopter of this, um, you said that I was more in line with the federal government and, and being an early adopter yourself then, um, and many people perhaps were, um, you might, ha might have a different uh, opinion and have consumed more information. Nah, that's a good point. Okay, let's go to the next question. Let's try to get through them. How well have uh, healthcare providers and systems, this is another category, sort of like government healthcare now, how well have healthcare providers and systems done? And um, this is interesting. They've done well despite all the 
the problems uh, they've had, the lack of equipment and staff and so forth. Um, and um, yeah, and uh, that's, 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 I think that's an important answer. I think it's accurate in, in terms of what's happened. What's your reaction on this one, Catherine? We're calling the um, let's look at providers. the text. Let's look at the text on it so we can see what we're talking about. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we're calling the providers um, the heroes, and I think it's very reasonable for people to conclude that they are doing well despite the lack of supplies and shortages. They're continuing to work hard and battle this horrible battle and taking on risk to themselves. Yet they complain that they don't have enough equipment equipment clearly they're they're doing the best they can it's interesting it's 44 plus percent they've done well despite shortages only 11 percent is they haven't been able to do well because of shortages uh you know we we got to send out a similar survey going forward next couple of weeks and see if that changes uh, you know because of the, the you know the apex uh, phenomenon okay let's go to the next one so interesting. Are you satisfied with the level of testing? Well, this is the most pronounced answer of all. And the answer is, I am disappointed with the level of testing. And that goes to 85%. And I imagine that that is in significant part um, because uh, a lot of people out there would have liked to be tested or, or would believe logically that if you test people, you can get a better handle on how the disease is progressing and spreading through the community. Okay, here's the text and you, oh my goodness, 86, almost 87%, I am disappointed with the level of testing. Um, what do you think, Catherine? Uh, I know Dr. Miskovich is working very hard to get people tested, but we've had a lot of problems with getting the testing kits um, and being able to use them well, we just don't have enough and we don't have enough personnel. It's very difficult. I think everyone would like to get tested if they could, um, but we're not in that position. It would be great if we could get um, 1.2 million tests and have everyone do it. Yeah, we're not there yet. And uh, despite uh, all the assurances of over the past several weeks now, since early March, I think, um, we're not there. And that's a real problem because you, you know, I'm sure that all the experts will say, uh, to, including especially, especially um, the Josh Green, will say that you need to have tests to know where you are. Okay, let's go to the next one. We're getting toward the end now. Okay, uh, what's the question? Have are you satisfied with ThinkTech's coverage of the crisis? And something over forty percent said that they are. Um, as, as, as some percentage said, I am not satisfied. Uh, we don't know the detail on that. We didn't ask. And, um, and then a lot of them said, 60% uh, uh, plus said, I don't know enough to say. And I think that's probably because they haven't looked at a lot of uh, think tech uh, talk shows yet. Okay, uh, maybe they will after. So here's the, uh, here's the specific percentages and the text. Um, Catherine, what does this tell you? Well, I think that you're doing a great job in providing this information that's needed to the public. And I think that people who don't know, they haven't, they don't have the time to put into watching. So they're being honest. There are a few people, there's always going to be people that um, don't like anything. And so those are the people who are probably saying that they're not satisfied with it, or maybe they feel like you could do even more or do less. Yeah, you don't know. It, it could be that. It could be either one. But I, I tend to think, maybe I'm biased about this, I tend to think they, they would like to see us do more. And, and if you ask them if they're satisfied, they say, well, no, we're not satisfied because we want to have more and more and more. They're, uh, they're um, you know, fixed on it, as a lot of people are. Okay, and that's the last question, number 10. Um, I'd like to see, oh, the, number nine, rather. I'd like to see more coverage on ThinkTech. Um, and, um, okay, so let's look at the text so we can read it. Uh, I'd like to see more local Hawaii coverage, uh, 46% plus. I'd like to see more national coverage. Mm. This is the last question. Um, 11 and so forth. Uh, uh, clearly between those two, people want local coverage. I'd like to see international coverage. That's about the same as the national coverage. That's interesting. 
I'd like to see more scientific coverage. Well, this is consistent with the early questions about uh, talking to scientists and, and doctors. 46 and a half want to see more scientific and medical coverage. They want to know more about how, how this works, uh, probably because it, you know, that affects them. At least I'd like to see community, that's uh, only 16%. I'd like to see business, 37%. Those are the people you know who care about business or jobs. And the last one, I'd like to see more government and political coverage. <laughs> That's the lowest one of all, <clears throat> 6.9, almost 7%. <clears throat> I guess people, you know, they don't want to hear any more from government and political. <laughs> they want to hear from doctors. <laughs> What's your reaction to this one? Um this is we're in the information age, Jay, and people want information regarding the medical and scientific information from e epidemiologists. They um, just like if you go to the doctor and complain of something, one of the one of the functions of a medical doctor is to provide reassurance. And I think that what we want to hear as a country is we want to get reassurance from medical personnel and ep epidemiologists. And we're not really getting that. We're getting it from politicians, people that are non-medical. So um, that's why I think they're answering that way. Yeah, very good. I, I, my, my view is the same. So those are the answers we have so far. There'll be more answers to this survey. We still have a week to go on it, uh, more than a week. And um, I think it's very interesting to see how people have come in so far. Uh, we'll be observing them as, as we go. We'll be making decisions about what kinds of uh, shows we want to do on it. I, I think I already have a good handle on at least how some of them feel. Um, and we'll do some more surveys, too. We'll follow this because it's totally dynamic. It moves on so quickly. Uh, and that we'll we'll probably change our questions, uh, and we'll do this uh, next month. It'll be a new world next month, one way or the other. So look at the survey, answer the survey now. It's on our website, thinktechaway.com, uh, and it is uh, on our uh, on our daily email advisory. You can sign up for that on our website, um, and um, it's uh, youtubecom slash away is our YouTube uh, channel. So uh, thank you very much. It's been very, uh, very interesting answers from you and uh, very interesting to put this on the screen, I must say. Uh, Catherine Knorr, uh, she's the host of Much More on Medicine. You can see where she's coming from and we'll see her again, what, tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much, Catherine. All right. All right, thank you, thank Jay. You. Thank you all and thanks to those of you who watch us and who respond to our surveys. Aloha.